information so much for information. As America's Illuminati and their warlords of Wall Street and Washington. In just eight years, these banksters and international government gangsters took us from the greatest creditor nation to the largest debtor nation on earth. Our standard of living has dropped like a rock for four out of every five Americans. They have foreclosed on our homes, our farms, our factories. They've exported your jobs and surrendered our arms. Ah, that's my good friends, Anthony J. Hilder and Evan Sweetwater. Sweetwater Productions made this CD. Really good stuff. Of course, they're both very talented. Especially Evan, who writes all the music, performs every instrument, mixes all the music, and uh, writes the, uh, the uh, lyrics and... Uh, you know, produces the whole thing. I mean, he's just an incredible young man. He's uh, busy producing some new music, all new music for the hour of the time, which you'll be hearing, I don't know when, when he gets it done, I guess. <laughs> when I get it. Oh, once again, you're listening to the hour of the time. And uh, it is the hour. That's the most important hour in the whole life. It's, during this hour, you'll determine your future. And in a way... That sort of determines all of our future. I'm William Cooper. According to William Jefferson Clinton in a White House memo, which Rush Limbaugh read on the air on his Excellence in Broadcasting Network, the most dangerous radio host in America. <laughs> Can you believe what's going on out there? This is incredible. About 40 times an hour, somebody stands up somewhere and calls this great republic a democracy. <laughs> About 40 times an hour. Bush representatives, Gore representatives, uh, Florida State representatives, media talking heads, uh, idiot professors from Marxist universities, and who knows what all, you know. There, there. They're damaging our democracy. They're damaging our democratic process. We have to go through this this process so that our democracy can survive. Oh, gag me. <laughs> How did they live so long without ever hearing the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> you know, the one that says, uh, to the republic for which it stands? <laughs> To the republic for which it stands, and, and uh, of course they're all you know pretty prominent people, right? They've been around for a while. Many of them have served in government positions, and uh, they all have taken oaths at one time in their life or other to protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, you know when they talk like that, they turn out to be one of the enemies they're supposed to be protecting it from. In Article 4, Section 4, <laughs> Article 4, Section 4, ladies and gentlemen, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government. And every time I hear them, I just want to take up my copy of the Constitution, just smack them in the mouth with it, just as hard as I can. You know, stick it halfway down their throat. You know, they might be curious as to what it is that's lodged in their throat, and when they pull it out, they might be tempted to read it. That's that's the whole theory behind the urge that I have. Of course, I would never do such a thing, but I sure feel like it. Oh boy, do I feel like it! This is a, what a what a what a disgusting debacle that's going on here, and and they keep referring to uh, get this, folks. Uh, they don't even understand what's happening there. Here's what they say. I've heard it at least 20 times today from a whole bunch of different people. 
Oh, Professor So and So, can you believe that the that the vote of of uh, 275 million people all across this nation has boiled down to just just a 259 uh, vote difference? That's a bold faced lie. It's a two. It, at the time it was spoken, I don't have any idea what it is now. But at the time it was spoken, they were claiming that the popular vote count in the state of Florida, the difference between Gore's popular vote count and Bush's popular vote count was just 259 in favor of Bush. And they were trying to say that that was the total difference, the only difference between the votes of both of them of the whole nation. Disgusting. And they keep repeating themselves over and over and over again ad nauseum until you're just sick of seeing the stuff and hearing it. And believe me, folks, if I didn't have to do these broadcasts, and if I wasn't engaged in, in the, the great education of America that I'm set myself to, to try to do years ago, I wouldn't have listened to this stuff for longer than five minutes. It's just absolutely demoralizing and sickening. And, and the media, it is the media that is feeding this frenzy of democracy, which, of course, really means socialism. This whole thing is targeted at the Constitution for the United States of America. It is designed to destroy the republic by taking another big chunk out of it, out of its checks and balances, out of its, out of its integrity, out of its greatness, and it's absolutely disgusting. I can't stand it. <laughs> and not only that, but the, all the networks are lying to us again. I mean, just boldface giving us rumors. All day long, they've been telling us that uh, they've been giving us these numbers from these counties, and people think that these are the official certified numbers of the state of Florida, and they're not. They're rumors. Rumors. You see, I happened to be watching today when it was 53 counties out of 67 counties reporting Bush had 900 and something votes, and Gore had, you know... 900 and something votes ahead, and Gore was losing. Well, at 5.10 p.m. this afternoon, the Secretary of State of the State of Florida, long after this 53 county supposedly reported to the networks, uh, held a press conference. That was at 5.10 p.m. And she said that at that time, when all the networks were reporting 62 counties, the official vote, which again, just rumor, it's all bullshit, the Secretary of State of the State of Florida said at 5.10 p.m., while all of the networks, BS, NBC, CNN, NBC, ABC, all of them, CNN, were reporting 62 counties were in and the difference between the vote count was only something like 305. Here's what she said. She said, as of this moment, 5.10 p.m., only 53 counties have officially re reported their recount to the Office of the Secretary of State out of 67 counties. And... Here is the results so far. The candidate, George W. Bush, is ahead of Al Gore by 1,784 votes. Got that, Sheeple? <laughs> All day the network's been lying to us again. 1,784 votes is exactly the number of votes that George Bush was ahead on Tuesday when the count became official from the state of Florida. So while all these lying networks, all these talking, brainless, witless heads are endlessly spouting their democracy bullshit, 
telling us hours before this, when they said 53 counties had reported their official results, that George W. Bush was only ahead by 900 and something votes. And at the time that the Secretary of State of the State of Florida made her announcement at 5.10 p.m. this evening, they were saying that 62 counties had reported their results and the difference was only 305 votes in Bush's favor and dwindling fast. That was at 5.10 p.m. The same time when the Secretary of State of the State of Florida said this, at this moment, only 53 counties have reported their official results to the Office of the Secretary of State. That's 5.10 p.m. my time, folks. Out of 67 total counties, George Bush leads with 1,784 votes. When are you going to stop listening to these people? <laughs> they're the biggest liars on the face of this earth. And you know why they're all wrong? And you know why they're all reporting the same numbers all at the same time? Because they don't send out reporters to do all of these things anymore. They have what they call correspondents in the field. And they may only have one or two correspondents anywhere in the field because that's all they can afford to pay them these days because they've got to make big profits from their news divisions. So they get all of their statistics and all of the other stories and all of this other stuff from Associated Press, and every single one of them are getting these numbers from Associated Press. Remember Associated Press? Remember AP? Remember the Oklahoma City bombing? Remember the first casualty figures from the Oklahoma City bombing that AP let out to the world were the exact same casualty figures of the Branch Davidians? Ladies and gentlemen, on April the 19th, 1995, remember that? When they said uh, 86 people were dead and 17 children? <laughs> you know why they did it? They were propagandizing the American people trying to equate the Oklahoma City bombing with the Waco massacre. They blatantly lied, and they're lying now. They've always lied. They lied about what was going on at Waco. Over and over and over and over and over, AP is the worst. There's two that are the worst places to get your news from. The very worst. All of them are bad. All of them are bad, but these two are the very worst. Associated Press and ABC News. Those are the worst in the world. Associated Press and ABC News. They've been caught in more lies than anybody else that does the news, and they're all liars. All of them. And MSNBC has a new name. It is no longer MSNBC. It's BSNBC. 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 From now on, you will not refer to that stinking, propagandizing, lying network as MSNBC. You will, from here on forever, refer to them as BSNBC. That's an order. <laughs> Just joking, folks. <clears throat> but that's what you ought to be doing. Seriously. I've been listening to lies all day long. All day long, it just gets so sickening. And listening to these dear, sweet little old ladies who've been rounded up by the Democrat Party to sit in front of the cameras and tell their little stories. They're people's mothers and grandmothers and aunts. And they're just as sweet as could be, and if you knew them, you'd probably just love them to death, no matter who the hell they are. But they're senior citizens. We all know what happens when you begin to get old, and it's going to happen to all of us. You don't think as quickly or as accurately, nor are you as thorough in what you do. I have some of these little old ladies in my family. I know some of these little old ladies. I love them to death. But you've got to help them out on some things. 
and things get confusing to them. And when they could program a VCR maybe 20 years ago or 15 years ago or maybe even 10 years ago, they can't do it now. And yeah, ballots confuse them. And it wouldn't matter what kind of ballot you gave them. And that's the truth, and you all know it. Stand behind one of them in a the supermarket line sometime. And you, pretty soon, you make up your mind that it's better to stand in the line that's three times longer that doesn't have any sweet little old ladies in it than to stand in that line and wait for her to find her pennies and her nickels and find her checkbook and then find her pen and then take 15 minutes to fill out a check and then she has to examine the check and go over it again and look at it and hold it up to the light and <laughs> then she has to find her ID card and then you know see what she gets she has to count every penny of her change and there's nothing wrong with this folks it's life it's life now some people grow into their older years without a lot of these problems but most people don't most people have these problems men and women it's not just the little old ladies it's a lot of little old men too many of them are on the edges of or in the beginning of stages of Alzheimer's disease we all know that and so to sit there and watch them tell their sad tale about going into the voting booth and and uh, you know you look at the ballot it's in big type Every name has an arrow pointing exactly directly to the place where you're supposed to poke the hole. And you listen to their tale of woe, how they got so confused and couldn't find the arrow and didn't know where to poke, so they poked one hole, and then they figured they made a mistake. So instead of taking their ballot over to the person and saying, I screwed up my ballot, can I have another one? Which is okay, you can do that. They don't want to embarrass themselves, so they uh, they poke another hole. <laughs> and invalidate their ballot. And then they go out and they're, they're holding it so nobody can see they poke two holes in the ballot and they stick it in the box and walk away so nobody has to know about it. And then after the candidate loses and the Democrat Party makes a big deal out of it and all of the precinct wardens and, and all of the Democrat officials go around, you know, trying to stir up trouble and find out if there were any irregularities, they find these little old ladies and little old men and get them to come forward and tell their story of woe. I feel sorry for them because they're being used. And I know absolutely that they're being used, ladies and gentlemen, because in the last election in 1996, there wasn't even near the turnout that there was in this election. In this election, there were 19,000 ballots that were disqualified because the people who filled them out poked two holes in them and voted for two different people for the same office. That is against the law it automatically renders a ballot no good now I'm not picking on Democrats because I don't want George Bush in there either you gotta understand that I'm just interested in the truth and this is the truth 19,000 this time last time in 1996 there were 16,000 <laughs> 16,000 of those people did the same thing in 1996 same thing on a different kind of ballot. It was not this ballot. Different kind of ballot. So this is all bullshit. And they're using these people. And of course, these people don't know it. They think they're contributing to democracy. Oh, we got to make this right. I was confused. Of course you're confused. You're confused at just about everything you do when you get that old. I hope I don't get confused like that when I get that old, but i got to tell you, statistics say that I probably will. And statistics say that all of you out there listening probably will also. This is the truth. You don't want to be behind or in front of or beside any of these people when they're driving on the road. They get on a highway where the speed limit is 75 miles an hour and they go 25 miles an hour and they cause accidents. They go halfway past the intersection where they want to make a turn, and then they make it. And people are running to get out of the way and dodging and running up on the grass and stuff. I mean, it's these, they're dangerous when they're operating machinery. We all know it. We see it every day in our lives. So why, why is it all of a sudden a surprise that these 
senior citizens whom we all love and care about get confused in the voting booth and poke their ballot twice. And I think it's a crime to be using them in this way. I really do. I really do. And a lot of other things. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about this stuff, and i got to tell you it's happened in every single state. Every state. And in every community where there's a lot of senior citizens, there's a lot of ballots thrown out because they were punched twice. Don't believe me? Go check with your local election board. You want to really see a whole bunch of ballots that were punched twice? Go to Sun City in Arizona. The biggest senior community in Arizona, you'll see more ballots punched twice than they ever dreamed of in West Palm Beach, Florida. And thrown out. A little Colombian coffee here, folks. <clears throat> State of New Mexico is still counting their votes. They've got it marked for Gore. But the election is not official in New Mexico. It's not over. <laughs> and Gore may not win it. Big discrepancies in Colorado. Wisconsin. Michigan. A lot of other states. California. You want to recount some votes? They need to send the United States Army to California and recount that whole state. And they need to have Immigration and Naturalization Service go over each of those ballots and go round up all those illegal aliens and, you know, shove them back across the border where they came from and invalidate all of their votes. I mean, if you want to really get down and dirty, let's, uh, let's do a recount in every state, but along with the recount, let's validate the registration and citizenship of every person who voted, and let's make sure that they're still alive. Because I guarantee you, in the state of Illinois, as happens in every presidential election, a lot of voters came directly from the cemetery, and their address is six feet down. Same, in Ar same as Arkansas, if you believe the uh, governor of that state. And I believe him, 100%. I don't think he was lying to us at all. I think he told us the truth. 100% truth. Everything he said. What he said about Arkansas, oh, man, wasn't, wasn't Al Gore listening when this guy was on the Don Imus show telling the truth about voting in his state? If I was Al Gore, I, I, you know, I'd be in Arkansas next because that went to George Bush. <laughs> I'd be demanding another vote count in the state of Arkansas wouldn't do any good, though, because Arkansas is a Democrat. And the Democrats are the dirtiest, stinkingest, most crookedest, criminal, vote scam, vote fraud artists that have ever lived. Now, don't get me wrong again, because the Republican Party has done its share of vote fraud. But nobody in the history of the world has ever done anything near vote fraud like the Democrat Party always has done in its history and is still doing today everywhere. Can you believe, and nobody's talking about this, in a state with 58 electors, what's the matter with George Bush? Has George Bush got a brain? Why in the world would we want him in the White House when he's allowing them to get away with taking California with a vote from illegal aliens who were pre-registered by the Democrat Party, sent a letter signed by President William Jefferson Clinton, including a voter registration card with their name and a phony address on it, telling them to report to a certain poll on Tuesday to cast their vote in their new country. And George W. Bush isn't saying a word about that, is he? And you want him in the White House? In my estimation, California ought to be under martial law right now. <laughs> because of that little stunt. And all of the officials of the Democrat Party and William Jefferson Clinton for allowing his name to be put on the bottom of that letter ought to be in prison right now. Right this minute. You think that's ever going to happen? No. 
Because this whole thing is a sham. It's a scam. It's orchestrated. And George Bush don't give a damn about the 58 electoral votes in California because that's not what this election is all about. It's about destroying the checks and balances and the constitutional protections of this country and the electoral process. It's to destroy the electoral college. It's to institute in this country real democracy something the Founding Fathers were scared to death of. And America's watching it. <laughs> and participating in it. They have big demonstrations down in West Palm Beach. Listen to some stupid jerk. You know, he knew the camera was on him, so he's just yelling, This is a democracy! It's the will of the people! To hell with the law. It's the will of the people. If the law is against the will of the people, then you've got to change the law. He's just screaming this. No, it's a republic. And a republic is instituted under the rule of law. Governed and limited and protected by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the amendments thereto. So that all citizens are equally protected and looked after and the integrity of the election process is preserved in the Electoral College because that's what the Electoral College is for. You see, if the electors from all of the states determine that there was a great injustice rendered to either one of the candidates in the state of Florida, they, as statesmen appointed to elect the president on December the 18th, will do the right thing. That's what they're for. You see, the people do not and never have in this country ever voted for the president or the vice president. They're voting for electors. That's another thing that makes me so sad, watching these poor people down in Florida saying, I was denied the right to vote because I punched the ballot twice because I was confused. And I didn't, my vote was not cast for my presidential candidate. Well, number one, dear, my dear sweet lady, my dear sweet grandma, your right to vote was preserved. You went to the polling place and you got your ballot and you went into the voting booth and you had your right to vote. You screwed it up. You screwed up the ballot. You blew it. Nobody took away your right to vote. And what you were voting for was never your choice of a presidential candidate, not ever, not ever, even though you're voting for his name on a form that is a scam. It's always been a scam in this country to even think for any American, to even think or believe for one moment that they're voting for their presidential candidate or their vice presidential candidate. You are voting for an elector. That's what you're voting for. So, my dear, I'm sorry, but I have to be the one to tell you this. And it may hurt your feelings because as a senior citizen, in your sunset years, it's pretty hard to learn that you've been lied to all your life and you're going to resist it you're not going to even want to hear it. And you're going to rant and rail against me or anyone else who tries to tell you the truth about what's really happening. And it will make you cry and you'll go home and you'll be angry for days. But after it's all over, and after it's all said and done, after you've railed and ranted and beat on the wall and called me and other people names, it will still be the truth. It will still be the truth. And no matter how much you may think it's a bad truth, it's a good truth. It's one of the checks and balances our Founding Fathers gave us to save us in instances like this. To save us from demagogues. To save us from the mob. To make sure that the right person 
at least as far as those who run, goes into the White House. Because I'm going to tell you right now that on December the 18th, the Electoral College could, if they wanted to, put Ralph Nader in the White House. And that's the truth. And even this listening audience didn't believe any of this. I remember the first night that I came on the radio and started telling you the truth about the Electoral College, and call after call after call after caller called me a liar. And there are still people left over from those broadcasts still sending me letters and still calling me, calling me a liar, telling me that the electors must vote absolutely for whoever was elected in their district or their state by the popular vote. Now, the experts have been on the television networks all day today and all day yesterday, and they've been telling you the truth. They don't have to. They don't have to. You see, the only participation of the state in the electoral process is the state gets to choose the electors any way they wish. It is a function of the legislature of the state that is appointing the electors. Once the state appoints the elector, it is federal jurisdiction. The state has nothing to say or do about any of it. It's constitutionally mandated according to the Constitution for the United States and the amendments that have affected the electoral process, and they can vote any damn way they choose. For anybody that they choose who has qualified and run to be the President of the United States of America. And I'm not so sure that they couldn't reach out and choose somebody who didn't even run as long as they qualified or met the qualifications outlined in the Constitution that the president must fulfill in order to become president. It's never happened. But I'm not so sure that it couldn't because I can't find anywhere in the Constitution where it's prohibited at all. And if it's not prohibited, it can be done. Isn't this amazing? My good friend Jeffrey, whom has been a dear listener and a dear friend for years, and, and I still consider him to be a dear friend, is still fighting this battle, trying to make me believe that the electors must vote for the popular vote in their state. It's not true. Not true at all. And he's not the only one. Not the only one. Jeffrey's problem is that he is uh, seeing impaired, which is just another politically correct way of saying that he's blind. And so he can't pick up the Constitution and read it for himself. He must ask other people what it says. And unfortunately, not too many people know what it says or tell the truth about what it says. All of you who have good eyes... don't have that problem. And I still know that most of the listeners to this broadcast still do not have their own copy of the Constitution, although you should. I've been railing at you for years to get a copy of the Constitution. The Constitution defines the nation. Bill Clinton is not the nation. Washington, D.C. is not the nation. The nation is not some weird geographic boundary. I used to see these bumper stickers back during the Vietnam era said, My country, love it or leave it. It's not a geographic boundary that you can love or leave. It's a set of principles and ideals enshrined in three basic documents. The Declaration of Independence, also known as the Unanimous Declaration of the Thirteen Colonies, the Articles of Confederation, and the Constitution for the United States of America, which includes, ladies and gentlemen, the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are not separate from the Constitution. The Founders would not adopt nor accept the Constitution for the United States of America and would not ratify it until the Bill of Rights were pinned and included as an integral part of that document. So when you refer to the Constitution for the United States of America and the Bill of Rights as two separate documents, you are flagellating yourself. You are making a big mistake. They are not. They are one document. And unless I open the phones, don't call. It's always been my rule. 
And while I'm on that subject, folks, there's only one time when you're justified in calling me, and that's between 12 noon, my time, and 5 p.m., my time, Monday through Friday. I've said this over and over and over and over again. If you call me before noon, unless it's a real emergency, I'm going to be rude and I'm going to hang up on you. Call me after 5 p.m., and it's not a real emergency, I'm going to be rude and I'm going to hang up on you. Call me on Saturday or Sunday or during the night or any time. If it's not a real emergency, I'm going to be very rude to you and I'm going to hang up on you. Because you're an inconsiderate slob, you wouldn't call. You wouldn't even think of calling Rush Limbaugh at home, ever, or Larry King, or G. Gordon Liddy, or anybody else. I give you a time that you can call me at home, and most of you adhere to that. Some of you are just absolute asses, have no consideration whatsoever. And call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, 5, 2 minutes before the broadcast, right after the broadcast, and I will not tolerate it, period. So don't. If you're not guilty, I'm not talking to you. Those of you who are guilty, you know I'm talking to you. <laughs> you see, there was a time when I used to let people call me at any time, and everybody had my address, and everybody had my home phone number. And it was abused. I couldn't go to sleep for five minutes. The phone would ring. Two o'clock in the morning, some jerk with pink hair and rings in his ears and in his nose and his eyelids would be banging on the door, claiming that he was abducted by some aliens or something. <laughs> and so one day I just got sick of that crap, and I said, no more. No more. We're going to open the phones now. Now you can call. Now we'll talk about, <clears throat> and let's keep it to the election, folks. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Cooper. Hello. Uh, you're a fan of uh, Backwoods Magazine? Backwoods Home Magazine. Yeah, Backwoods Home Magazine. Yes. There's an article in there by John Silveri, or Silveria on the coming American dictatorship, and I think that's something that your audience out there should look up and read. It's a very good article. Well, if they want to be self-sufficient and uh, and live through the hard times that are going to come, regardless if they come tomorrow or they don't come for another 8 or 9 or 12 years, they should be reading back home, Backwoods Home Magazine anyway. Well, I was at a, I was at a uh, power breakfast here for businessmen here in the Houston area. Power breakfast. Yeah, when I was a corporate executive, I remember those well. Yeah. Wear your blue stuff. blazer with the with the. You had to have uh, uh, you had to have always more than three gold buttons on the sleeve because three gold buttons <laughs> is is common working class. You had to have four, five, or six gold buttons. Right. And of course that you were part of the fascist. Yeah. Movie. You had to have your red uh, or burgundy tie and your you know your beautiful button down shirt and yeah. your wing tips and your, your nice uh, beautiful wool gray slacks and. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Well, the, I remember those about power the election and everything. Yeah. And I'm over there talking to my end of the table with different guys, and one fellow leans over and he told me that I was completely out of my mind. And I stood up and I banged my my glass and um, I started to tell him what you've been talking about tonight. Uh -huh. And and people started telling me that I was wrong. And I said, Look, I've got a thousand dollars in my pocket in cash right now, and I'll bet anybody here that I'm right and that you're wrong. In fact, I'll put all my possessions up. And all you have to do is prove me wrong. And not one of those men would take that challenge up. Oh, then you became the most powerful man at the meeting at that moment. <laughs> not one of them. That's, that's when you became the most powerful man at that meeting at that moment. And they all showed themselves for what they are. Exactly. And I said, y'all are just a bunch of boys. <laughs> and that was... You know, and I sat down and I finished my breakfast and I left. Yeah. I didn't have any... I, I won't go back to this again. And, and that is the condition Why not? You of should. leadership and in our country. Why? No, no, no. Huh? That's the wrong idea. You should go back. You should go well, to maybe the... maybe I, I will go back. Well, listen, listen to me now. You should go to the next meeting and take a copy of the Constitution for every single one of them and highlight with the yellow highliner all of the pertinent points that prove what you told them the last time. Okay. Well, I'll, I will do that. And do that. And say, I'll go you know... I'll a quick copy and... and uh, and, and do that tomorrow. Yeah, say, I'm your friend, and th this is for your That's your education, and, and you'll be a better man if you read it. And so you remember I called a couple of weeks ago, and I said that I thought that they were mm -hmm. going to even up this thing and make a big shebang out of it, 
you know, with the intent of, of calling for, well, I said a constitutional uh, convention. Uh, I, and, and, of course, remember, we, you told, and you reminded us about speculation. Yeah. Say if we were speculating, and that's good. Yeah. And, I, and there, I, will, there will not be a constitutional convention. No, it was an amendment. There will be amendments, yes. An amendment to this. And that, <laughs> that has been the whole exercise. You're right. All this crap that's going on. You're absolutely correct. And, and, um, and, and you know what's interesting? I've, I've read articles from, from uh, you know, everywhere you can imagine from around the country over the last year. And, and, and they have been working up toward this little by little. So you know what? It is, it is, it is, a, it is a, a conspiracy in concert by both parties. Absolutely. And I knew that, I knew that this was coming. And I knew that there was a big, a big, a big uh, uh, clash coming um, months ago when they first started talking about, guess what, the Electoral College, which they had never discussed in the history of any election that's ever occurred in this country uh, in my entire life. And you're right. I've watched, the electro I've watched the election process going all the way back. I can remember back during the Carter administration, and never one time did they ever bring up the Electoral College no. until this election. Nope. They always announced the winner by popular vote. It was always <laughs> the popular vote. It was always the big scam of the popular vote. Well, you all remember out there to get that article, uh, the coming... American dictatorship. I think that the the article is is, is, is very well rounded in where this is going. I mean, he makes a remark about you know everybody wants less taxes and less government, and we vote the same people back in the office every year. Everybody we wants get, whatever they can get from whoever they can get it from. We have well, turned, turned into, into a, a nation of, of materialistic, greedy bastards, and that's the we're, truth. We've turned into a bunch of materialistic masochists. Well. In my book, that's the same as a greedy bastard. <laughs> anyway, i got to let you go. Thanks, thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. We'll be taking your calls for the rest of the hour. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Bill in North Carolina. Howdy. I uh, wanted to point out a couple of things to you. Sure. Uh, I saw on CBS News. Uh, I've noticed one word uh, that has always been linked with the word electoral college. That word is antiquated. Have yes. you noticed that? Yes. You'll see that in my article. On the, on the website, I also use the word antiquated, <laughs> <laughs> referring to what you just said. Well, there's uh, there's one thing here that uh, you were talking <laughs> about, the uh, popular vote being cast in uh, New Mexico, not complete. Yeah. Um, CBS News reported tonight that the popular vote will not be finished until Thanksgiving in Oregon. So there, there's another one there that we can that we can look forward to. Yep. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a lot of absentee ballots uh, for for Oregon too. And I'm not talking about the ones that the citizens mail in. I'm talking about ones from out of the country. Yeah, yeah. They were saying the problem there was that people uh, were not actually mailing them in; that they were just simply turning them in late. Uh, they, they showed a visual of the. Uh, well, what do you expect? What do you expect from from a bunch of hippies? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, here's I, I, now, no, I don't mean that about everybody in the state of Oregon. But I got to tell you, a lot of the what we used to call hippies are now living in Oregon. I got to tell you that's hmm. true. Well, you know the uh, the electoral college, the people that are that are voting is is that or is that not a secret ballot? Well, it's a secret ballot when they vote, but it's made public because they have to present it to the Congress. Okay. Well, Dan Rather on CBS News tonight said that in the history of this nation there have only been seven electors that have swayed in history and never has it affected the outcome. That's not true. Well, it isn't true. It absolutely is not true because it did affect the outcome at least twice that I'm aware of. The elections of 1876 and 1888. That's absolutely correct. And uh, uh, did you hear that uh, the NAACP um, had written to Janet Reno uh, asking for U.S. Marshals down in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Well, I sent them to Florida. They better not come up here. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> one more quick thing. I'll let somebody else get in there. Um, you heard, did you hear uh, today that uh, Dan Forrest had absolved all the guys at, about Waco? Uh, the, the what now? Dan Forrest. You know, he was leading up the Waco investigation. Well, that wasn't. Uh, he did that months ago. Okay. Well, they, they had a piece in USA. Today. And now, now they filed charges against one of the the members of the Justice Department that blew the whistle on him. Yeah, Bill Johnson is yeah. his name. Yeah. Yep. They're going to prosecute him. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. But, uh, you know, the, this whole thing about democracy has really got me upset, and it had me upset for several weeks now before the election. It's okay. Madame Defarge is knitting furiously. <laughs> furiously. Well, you know.
know, it, it amazes me, Bill. I stand there with a Constitution literally in my hand, open to Article 4, Section 4, and I tell these people, I say, your vote doesn't matter. We don't have a democracy. That's right. And I swear to God, it'll get you up this fight just about every time. You that's know? because they're stupid. Mm -hmm. And they think, they're thinking you're stupid when it's them that's stupid. They've never even checked. They take what they hear as being truth. It's amazing to me. I don't know if we're all going to wake up in time or not. <laughs> well, we're not. I've told you that already. It's going to be a civil war in this country. It's gone past the point that there's ever going to be, or ever can be, or you can even think of having a political resolution to what's going on. Well, If we're going to restore a constitutional Republican government, it's going to be with a force of arms, and that's why the Founding Fathers gave us the second article and amendment, so that we would have those tools when we needed them. Yeah, well, I, I certainly hope you have a good evening. i, I got guns to clean. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later. Thanks for calling. Sure. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. This is John in Houston. Hi, John. Uh, I have the same problem with these media yo-yos on the Houston television stations. Every other day, I'm having to call one of them up and tell them, show me where the Constitution says that we're a democracy. It, it show it, to Ask them to show you anywhere in the Constitution where that word even appears once. Exactly. I remind <laughs> them that not only Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution, but Article 1, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution, each guarantees us a Republican form of government. That's and correct. I offer to give them $100 if they can find the word democracy mentioned once in either the Texas or the United States Constitution. And yet those those brainless idiots, those twits that they have, these talking heads, were doing the local news here in Houston on virtually every station. Uh, democracy, democracy, over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I agree as with you that I think that this whole charade that's going on in Florida is an attempt to destroy the last vestige of a Republican form of government by getting rid of the Electoral College. Yeah, they got rid of uh, the state legislatures appointing the senators and thus did away with the sovereignty, uh, or at least uh, chipped away at the sovereignty of the states. And uh, now they want to get rid of the, uh, the last uh, protection that we have that saves us against the dictatorship, and that's the Electoral College. You bet. And another thing is that I want to tell people that anyone who's ever watched Jay Leno, in spite of all of his faults, he had a really good thing on a couple of nights ago. If you want to know why so many people are so brain dead to vote for the likes of Al Gore, Jay Leno went to one of the uh, colleges in the country. I forgot where he said it was, but he actually, you could see him there. This was not a, a gag or a routine. Yeah, I know. He does it all the time. He goes out in the street and yeah. asks, asks people questions. And he went to this college and asked a number of different college students questions like, who attacked us at Pearl Harbor? Well, the young lady didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> he asked the young man, well, when was the Civil War fought? Well, he didn't know. He thought first the 1840s and then the 1880s. No, you've done ass. It was 1861. Yeah, I know. But let's, let's, not, let's not get off on a tangent on this, okay? Yeah. We're talking so about the election, not Jane, not uh, Jay Reno. One Reno, particular question after another, after another about civics and, and history and things like that. Uh, none of these idiots knew. Yeah. Like MacArthur is saying... I know, but I, I've said it twice now. I'm not going to say it again. Get off this subject. That's but not the subject of tonight's conversation. That's why when these idiots spout off democracy, and I've asked people before, I've gone to speak before organizations before, I've spoken before high schools, and I asked these kids, I asked them, well, what form of government do you have? And I've even asked people who are taking government classes uh, in college, and, oh, we're a democracy. No. Yeah. Have you ever read the Constitution? Well, sure I have. Well, I said, well, you better go back and read it well, again. Well, in the first place, when they say, well, sure I have, they're lying through their teeth. Sure. They're lying through that they never read it. I guarantee you they never they read it. They maybe looked at the cover, but that was about well, it. Well, I guarantee you they didn't even look at the cover. There isn't any cover on the Constitution to start with, and that tells me something about you. Well, no. I've... Five two zero three 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 four five. Say, you always get caught if you try to bullshit me. <laughs> cover on the Constitution. Uh, can you believe that? This guy is berating other people because they didn't read the Constitution. He's talking about the cover on the Constitution. There is no cover on the Constitution. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill, this is Wayne from North Carolina. I was feeling a little bad last night. I feel good tonight, so I feel like talking. The one thing, I've had all my other thunder stolen by you and other callers, but you know what tonight we're doing that I don't think anybody said? We're demonstrating to the world that our system of, of transition of power is just 
slaying in flames in front of everybody tonight all around the world, and I think it's absolutely disgusting. Well, it is disgusting. They're all watching us. It is disgusting, but this is not our system of transition. But, but you know what I mean. We I'm look telling, like I'm you, around the world. Here's what happens. Florida doesn't mean dip. The well, electoral, no, it doesn't. The electoral, it... the electoral college is going to meet on December the 18th with or without Florida's electors, and they're going to elect a president. Okay. So what that, all that's going on down there is all bullshit. The electoral college is going to meet. Listen to me, folks. They're going to meet on December the 18th with are without the electors from the state of Florida as required by the con really Hey, that. don't interrupt me on my own show, okay? Sorry. As required by the Constitution for the United States of America and the United States Code. And they're going to elect a president with or without the electors from the state of Florida. Now and you can I talk. I apologize for interrupting this. Go ahead. Uh, Remember, I, this is my broadcast, not oh, yours. Absolutely. And I love it. Uh, I, I'm just kind of embarrassed for us tonight around the world as folks watch this stuff. That was my main point for calling in, and you're absolutely correct, though, by the way. That's all I had, Bill. Uh, well, you have a good evening. Thank you for your call. Thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. Remember, folks, when you call, you're a guest on my free speech radio. It's not yours. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, sir. Uh, a report, if you will allow me. I was coming home this evening and listening to a local AM radio station in Mobile, Alabama, so that any of your listeners that are interested can call and check out what I'm about to tell you. Okay. I consider what I heard to probably be a trial balloon and was quite surprised because in this part of the country, you don't generally hear the kind of information that you're trying to get out to the listeners. Uh, the local talk show host was even somewhat surprised himself, and I, I loved every minute of it because it sort of woke people up. This is just a story you will help me if you recognize the name of the institute that this gentleman on the other end of the phone represented. It was the Jimmy Carter and uh, the South African leader uh, Institute for Peace, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And the giveaway was that he described his organization as being fellow travelers. Yeah, that's communist. Hey, absolutely. And, well, it was a beautiful little flag, and I appreciate you for educating us to how to catch on to the lingo and phrases that they use. Anyway, to get to the punchline on this, the gentleman was quite comfortable in trying to get our local good old boy um, radio host comfortable with the idea that what they needed to do in South Florida, and he was quite serious, was send in United Nations troops to secure <laughs> democracy. Yeah. Well, I thought about it for a few minutes and said, he's got to be BSing. Let's stick with it and see if he can convince my local good old boys. Well, this is hunting and fishing country. If they send United Nations troops anywhere in the United States, I will be loaded up with all my combat gear, and I will be on the way to kill those bastards as soon as I get close enough to shoot them. That was the gist of the several local calls, at least from southern Alabama, was that, idiot, if you think you're going to send those boys down there, you're going to have some dead boys with blue helmets on their head. Lots of dead boys with blue helmets on their head. The gentleman eventually hung up because he was trying to catch a plane to hurry up and get to South Florida. <laughs> Whether or not... He better are, catch a plane out of the country. <laughs> exactly, but I felt like in light of where I am and relative to the kind of information that makes it out in this market, that may have, in fact, been a trial balloon. I hope your listeners will enjoy checking me out on this one because if the guy that did the show answers the phone, he'll give them an earful, and that's all I have. Okay, thanks for calling. Good night, sir. And that's it, folks, for another... Amazing episode of the Hour of the Time. The last bastion of free speech and truth in probably the whole world. And I, William Cooper, sitting behind this this microphone, the most dangerous radio host in America, and probably the last free man existing upon the face of this earth. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie Poo and Allison. I love you.